Just give me a moment. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, and assalamu alaikum. Um, today is the second talk of our series on inclusive education, uh, prospects and challenges. And we are very privileged to have with us today, Dr. Rinchen Dorji, who is the president of Sansi College of Education uh, at, uh, and former dean of research and industrial linkages at Paro College of Education, uh, Royal University of Bhutan. Rinchen has over 20 years of lecturing experience in pre-service teacher education in Bhutan, and he has been championing the, the inclusive education development uh, in pre-service and in-service teacher education programs in Bhutan. He has written extensively about it. Uh, Dr. Rinchen has uh, MA in, in human development and counseling from the University of New uh, Brunswick in Canada, MA in special education from Drew Hampton University, London, UK. And he has his PhD from the University of New England, uh, uh, Australia. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Dr. Garty, and taking out time for us. Um, we are very excited to listen in. So we will go about it in the, um, in the following format. You have 25 minutes to present, 25 to 30 minutes to present, and then we will open up the floor for question and answers. So over okay. to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Tayaba, uh, for that uh, kind introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to be, you know, uh, able to interact with you and your colleagues from uh, Lahore University of uh, Management Sciences, and at the same time, uh, be able to, you know, uh, share the little knowledge that I have of uh, inclusive education in the context of Bhutan to your postgrad students there in the university. Uh, we, I, I hope, uh, sincerely hope that this is the beginning uh, for a more, you know, a stronger collaboration and professional exchanges between you, your university and us here in Bhutan. So uh, uh, I would also like to, at the outside, uh, outset, thank uh, Professor Tayaba, you know, uh, uh, for getting out, uh, reaching out to me. Uh, reaching out to me to, you know, talk, share something uh, about inclusive education in Bhutan to your colleagues and to your students. So uh, I have titled my uh, presentation today as Inclusive Education in Bhutan Opportunities and Challenges. Uh, as uh, uh, Tayaba mentioned, uh, uh, before I, you know, uh, for those of you who do not really know much about Bhutan, I'll just give you a very brief, you know, uh, Bhutan is located right on the northeast of India. Uh, you can see in the slide, uh, you know, uh, we are a very small country and uh, I am working on the, you know, uh, working at Samsi College of Education. In Bhutan, we have two colleges of education that trains uh, teachers for the whole uh, education system. And uh, I look after uh, Samsi College of Education that trains uh, teachers for the secondary school system in the country. Uh, Bhutan is a, a, a very small country of, uh, you know, uh, where we, our population is not, not even a million. We are slightly over, uh, now slightly over 700,000 people uh, in a, you know, country size of over 38,000 square kilometers. Uh, my my talk today will be you know uh, centered around uh, you know uh, this core you know uh, framework. Uh, I'll briefly talk about uh, you know uh, Bhutan's development philosophy, which is called as the gross national happiness. And the reason why I uh, decided to talk about it uh, very shortly is uh, in brief is all development uh, efforts in the country, including education, actually is informed by the country's. Uh, development philosophy of cross-national happiness. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, briefly about the history of modern education in Bhutan, then present to you the general education structure, then, uh, you know, focus, uh, narrow down my focus uh, of the talk to inclusive education in the country, the government support and commitment towards uh, achieving inclusive education, and then some of the opportunities and challenges that we see in our efforts to develop uh, our education system into more inclusive uh, in its approach. So uh, 
all government uh, development efforts in the country is uh, informed by cross national happiness uh, probably uh, some of you would have read about it uh, cross national happiness is a development philosophy that emphasizes on the happiness and the emotional well-being of its people over the economic growth and development of a country so we emphasize bhutan as a small nation you know uh, emphasizes on the emotional well-being of our citizens uh, in all our development efforts uh, rather than you know uh, letting the economic or the gross domestic gross, gross domestic product which is the the more common measure of economic well-being you know that takes over the people's happiness uh, and emotional health the gross nas gross national happiness as a development philosophy is mainly composed of four pillars uh, development pillars that are sustainable and equ equitable socio economic development uh, conservation of the environment uh, preservation and the promotion of culture and good governance uh, and these four pillars of gnh are further subdivided into uh, subdivided into nine different domains uh, uh, that are psychological well-being health uh, time use uh, education cultural diversity and resilience uh, good governance uh, community vitality ecological diversity and resilience and then living standards of the people and this nine different domains are further subdivided into 33 33 different indicators which i actually use as a, a means to measure the happiness and well-being of the people and uh, as i informed earlier gross national develop uh, gross national happiness as a development philosophy which is very humanistic in nature actually influences all our development efforts in the country including education and uh, with this i would like to you know uh, inform uh, you that uh, modern education in bhutan is very young actually uh, the first uh, western model of western Western model of school was built uh, in 1914, but the real impetus uh, for the development of Western model of schooling in Bhutan took uh, uh, over only in the early 1960s when the first five-year development plans uh, was initiated uh, under the reign of our late majesty, the third king of Bhutan. So ever since uh, the beginning of the 1960s that actually witness uh, the real growth of modern education in Bhutan. Uh, this uh, Samsi College of Education was established uh, uh, as a teacher training institute that uh, addressed the needs of the primary school teachers uh, uh, in the early uh, years of its establishment. So in 1968, uh, uh, Samsi College of Education, which used to be called as Teacher Training Institute then, was established. In 1975, uh, uh, our sister teacher training college, uh, which is up in the western part of the country, which is called as Paru College of Education, was established as the another teacher training center. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, until the 1980s, uh, we had a very strong British Indian influence of uh, school curriculum. But uh, uh, beginning the 1980s, uh, the country initiated to botanize the whole school curriculum and also adopted uh, the new approach to primary education is an, as a new way of, uh, you know, a uh, new approach of teaching and learning in the school. In the 1990s, uh, uh, the, uh, the royal government of Bhutan, uh, you know, initiated the concept of wholesome education uh, with an objective to make education much more qualitative and higher standard uh, and making, uh, you know, uh, enabling children to connect uh, their classroom learning to their real life uh, situation so that the education that the children receive in their school become, is seen as much more wholesome, much more purposive much more meaningful and much more uh, effective. Uh, the real initiative and efforts for making our education system much more inclusive uh, uh, actually was initiated in the early 2000 with the introduction of the child-friendly school concepts uh, 
and inclusive education to address the needs of uh, children with special needs uh, in the country. Today, uh, as we embark on the you know, uh, new millennium, uh, the country is much more uh, uh, focused in making our education uh, uh, you know, uh, align with the 21st century education needs, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, using technology as an enabler of education. Prior to the introduction of the Western model of uh, schooling in the country, our uh, uh, education system was much more uh, monastic in nature. People could avail education mostly in the monasteries uh, uh, or religious centers. Thus, uh, monastic education was primarily dominant uh, before 1914. Uh, today, uh, this is a general uh, you know, uh, structure of our education. Uh, uh, the whole education system uh, consists of uh, 17 to 18 years of schooling. Uh, uh, you know, uh, our primary schooling uh, consists of seven years of uh, schooling from pre-primary until class six. From class one until class six, we consider it as uh, primary uh, schooling or primary education. Uh, then uh, from classes 7 until classes 12 uh, uh, is considered as secondary education and uh, within the secondary education the first two years of uh, secondary education is called as lower secondary education the next two years of uh, secondary education called as middle secondary and the next uh, you know uh, two years called as higher secondary so classes 7 to 8 are called as lower secondary Classes 9 to 10 are called as uh, middle secondary and classes uh, 11 and 12 are called as uh, higher secondary. And uh, tertiary education mostly is uh, uh, four years of uh, education. So altogether, uh, you will see that, you know, uh, it, uh, our, you know, uh, edu general education structure consists of three main components, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary education. Uh, as of 2021, uh, we are yet to see the 2022 uh, annual education statistics. But as of 2021, the Ministry of Education reported uh, uh, a total number of, uh, you know, over 200,000 students uh, enrolled in the entire education system with a total number of around you know, 10,000 plus uh, school teachers uh, teaching across the entire education system. Uh, status of uh, inclusive education uh, or education for children with special educational needs in the country. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, can you, are you able to see my slides? Yes, it's very clear. Okay. Uh, as of uh, 2022, uh, there are a total of uh, uh, 26 schools in the country that has special education programs uh, within the mainstream uh, school setting that caters for children with special needs. And the reason why I, I say that we have a total of 26 uh, schools uh, as of 2022, catering to children with special needs in a mainstream school setting is Bhutan aspires uh, to you know, transform all schools uh, into schools that uh, caters for children with special needs uh, in the long run. Uh, at the same time, for children with uh, you know, extreme uh, needs and disabilities, uh, severe forms of disabilities, uh, we still would like to, you know, uh, have special schools uh, that addresses the needs of children with special needs. As of today, we have only two special schools uh, with specialized uh, education services for children with visual impairment uh, and hearing impairment. So we have one school that addresses the needs of ch children who cannot hear at all, and one school that addresses the needs of children who cannot see at all. So only two special schools uh, at the moment that caters for the you know uh, needs of children with 
visual impairment and hearing impairment. In addition to the efforts of the government and the public schools, uh, we have a number of uh, uh, non-governmental organizations and civil society organizations uh, that complement the government's efforts uh, to address the needs of children with uh, special needs, uh, especially in terms of their education. Uh, we have uh, an NGO that is a private organization uh, called Drugso that mainly focuses on the vocational needs of children with special needs. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ability Bhutan Society, uh, which is called as ABS in short, uh, that addresses the needs of children with severe emotional uh, uh, disabilities. And we have the Disabled Persons Association of Bhutan that actually advocates uh, for inclusive education and advocates for improving the services related to people with uh, uh, special needs in the country. Uh, since 2019-2020, the Ministry of Education had also started off uh, by establishing or introducing vocational education programs uh, in all schools that uh, provide uh, special educational needs for children with special needs uh, in the country. As of today, uh, there are around 1,000 students with varying special needs or disabilities enrolled in the mainstream school setting uh, for education. And uh, as of 2021, uh, this is uh, according to, you know, uh, based on the disability studies report. Uh, uh, this study reports uh, that there are a total of 15,567 persons living with disabilities in the country and most and the most common form of uh, disabilities uh, that we have in the country is uh, 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 cognitive uh, disabilities people uh, or children suffering from intellectual disabilities uh, Bhutan has a very good uh, policy support for uh, inclusive education. The uh, gross national happiness as a development philosophy actually aligns, uh, the principles and the philosophy of gross national happiness actually aligns very well with the ideals uh, or the principles of inclusion. Uh, Bhutan 2020, which is a document, uh, uh, a vision document for peace, prosperity and happiness, uh, uh, which was developed sometime in 1999, also makes a special mention about the need to address the needs of uh, children with uh, special educational needs uh, in the mainstream education. The education sector strategy, which was a document uh, uh, prepared by the government to realize the Vision 2020 policy and strategy document, also makes a special mention of children's uh, uh, mentioned to address the educational needs of children with special needs. Uh, the Bhutan, 20, Bhutan Education Blueprint, which was a document uh, 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 that actually charted out a 10-year roadmap uh, to address the quality of uh, education in the country, had a special mention of uh, inclusive education as the new approach uh, to address the needs of a diverse group of children in the school. The standards for inclusive education uh, in Bhutan, which was developed and launched uh, in 2017, makes uh, and requires uh, all teachers in the country to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, pedagogies related to inclusive education as a measure to, uh, you know, uh, or as one of the benchmarks to measure teachers' competencies uh, in the school education. Uh, the Bhutan, uh, the Bhutan Professional Standards for Teachers, which is the uh, you know uh, uh, standard uh, national uh, standard document that we use for measuring the quality and standards of school teachers, also makes a special mention of uh, the teachers uh, to be able to teach a diverse group of children in the school, especially those children with special needs. Uh, the uh, the ICT Education Master Plan, uh, which is a five-year document that has been developed by the government uh, to uh, use uh, technology or ICT as an enabler of education, also makes a special mention 
of the need to use technology to address the needs of uh, children with special needs in education. Uh, in 2019, uh, the Royal Government of Bhutan uh, uh, formally approved uh, and endorsed the National Policy for Persons with Disability. And this uh, uh, policy document, uh, ever since its endorsement in 19, uh, 2019, has uh, uh, proven as a very important milestone in our efforts uh, towards uh, achieving inclusive education goals in the country. Uh, Bhutan's education system uh, is undergoing uh, a nationwide reform uh, today and this uh, education reform also places a special emphasis uh, of the need to address inclusive education in the country. Uh, teacher preparation for inclusive education. Uh, as I informed earlier, uh, we have two colleges of education in Bhutan that trains uh, and prepares teachers uh, for the whole uh, school system. Uh, Samsi College of Education uh, trains secondary school teachers for the uh, uh, school system. And Paro College of Education, which is located up there in the west, uh, uh, prepares uh, teachers for the primary schools in the country. And in both uh, uh, the colleges of education, all pre-service uh, teacher education programs uh, has a standalone uh, uh, module that offers uh, inclusive education uh, to all the pre-service teacher training, uh, uh, pre-service teachers. Paro College of Education also offers uh, MED inclusive education, MED in inclusive education, where all uh, in-service school teachers that teaches in that 26 uh, 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 mainstream schools with SEND programs come for qualification upgradation uh, uh, for, you know, uh, to have a specialized uh, training on inclusive education. Uh, the Royal Government of Bhutan through the Ministry of Education also uh, offers a series of continuous professional development training and workshops uh, on inclusive pedagogy, on inclusive assessment to prepare all teachers to address the need, uh, educational needs of children with special needs in the entire education system. Uh, uh, the competency-based framework for special education teachers have been developed by the Ministry of Education and this is a document that will that is yet to be fully implemented uh, in the school uh, system soon. Uh, as I informed earlier the Bhutan Professional Standards for Teachers uh, launched in 2020 uh, include inclusive education of the one, uh, inclusive education as one of the core standards to measure the competencies of the teachers in the school system. Uh, some of the opportunities that we see for inclusive education in Bhutan, uh, we have a very strong government support and political will to address uh, inclusive education agenda in the country. Uh, we are a small nation and a culture that respects ideals of inclusion. Uh, by society, we are uh, a country that uh, uh, respects, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are a very collectivist uh, society that res uh, uh, respects the ideals of uh, inclusion, uh, collaboration, cooperation, teamship, unity, uh, which are the ideals of inclusive education. Uh, Bhutan is uh, uh, basically a Buddhist uh, country and our belief, uh, the Buddhist belief in karma and in the you know, uh, uh, values of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity uh, also uh, you know, uh, aligns well with the uh, ideals of inclusive education. And we see this, uh, uh, the, uh, the Bhutanese uh, uh, cultural values uh, providing uh, a good ample of opportunities uh, to develop inclusive inclusive education in the country. Uh, over the past decade or so, we have also seen and witnessed an increasing awareness about inclusive education and the rights of persons with disabilities amongst the educated lot, including parents uh, of children with disabilities. And we see this as an opportunity because the more awareness uh, the community has uh, on inclusive education, we will also have uh, greater advocacy, uh, advocacy programs uh, to fight for inclusive education in the country. Uh, challenges uh, 
like any other developing countries or developing economies, uh, I think we share the same challenges. Uh, challenges uh, in terms of resources, uh, in uh, you know, human resources, financial resources, and infrastructure resources is always a challenge. The society's attitude towards people with disabilities, uh, the you know, uh, community attitudes towards people with disabilities, parents, uh, uh, teachers, and students uh, without disabilities, you know, uh, attitude towards uh, you know, children with disabilities are always a challenge, but this has improved over time. Uh, since the early to 2000, we have been, uh, uh, there has been a series of uh, advocacy programs to uh, eliminate, uh, you know, uh, negative uh, stereotypes uh, and the stig stigma, social stigma related to disability. And we have realized that uh, uh, people are now uh, more welcoming uh, of uh, uh, the differences that children with disabilities bring into the mainstream society, especially in the field of education. The preparedness of higher education institutions for inclusion is always a challenge. Uh, however, with the kind of government support and the political will that we have, we are hopeful that uh, this will be addressed in the near future. The preparedness of employment market for inclusion and job opportunities for people with disabilities is an issue. Teacher competences to teach children with special needs uh, has always been a ch challenge and a difficulty. School leadership or inclusive education uh, has been a challenge, uh, but we are still, you know, uh, with all the, you know, uh, government support, with the, you know, uh, uh, introduction of the uh, national policy for persons with dis persons with disabilities, uh, all other uh, educational uh, policies uh, uh, that addresses the needs of. Uh, children with special needs in inclusive education, we are hopeful that uh, all these challenges, ch challenges will gradually be converted into opportunities. School curriculum, which has always been seen as very rigid, uh, less accommodating for children with special needs, has always been seen as a challenge. Uh, the kind of assessment practices, which are mostly summative in nature, are seen as not very uh, uh, favorable for ch children with special needs uh, and we hope that uh, you know uh, these challenges will gradually be uh, uh, you know uh, addressed adequately with the kind of government support that we have uh, in the system uh, the road what is the future for inclusive education in Bhutan uh, the Bhutanese education system aspires all schools to be inclusive in the near future. But at the same time, with an understanding that there will always be a need for a specialized educational services for those children who, uh, uh, who have extreme forms of disabilities and learning needs. We also aim to train all teachers across the entire education system with the basic uh, uh, professional needs to address uh, the needs of uh, children with uh, mild to moderate uh, disabilities in the mainstream education system. We do not, our education policy is still in its draft form, but in the next few years, especially with the current education reform that is, uh, that has been initiated we, we are hopeful that uh, we will have a new education policy in place that is supportive, fully supportive of inclusive education. Uh, we have completed uh, drafting of the 10-year roadmap for inclusive education in the country. And very soon, this 10-year roadmap for inclusive education that we have just uh, uh, you know, drafted will inform the new education policy uh, uh, in the next few years. Uh, we hope uh, we are already uh, a signatory to the United Nations uh, Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, especially with the uh, launching of the uh, National Policy for Persons with Disability in 2019. We are also hoping that the country will soon ratify the UNCRPD that will 
uh, that will provide uh, uh, you know uh, a greater impetus uh, and a greater push uh, to advance uh, uh, our inclusive education agenda uh, inclusive education or uh, inclusion has already become a core agenda for all mainstream development efforts in the country including uh, education in Bhutan so uh, this is uh, uh, how we see uh, the future of inclusive education in Bhutan so with this uh, uh, I would like to you know uh, conclude my uh, presentation here if uh, uh, you have any questions I'll uh, try my best to you know uh, respond to your questions uh, or any clarifications that you have Thank you so much, Dr. Dorji, for this very insightful and comprehensive presentation about the status of inclusive education in Bhutan. I was, uh, uh, so uh, everyone is uh, encouraged to put their questions in chat or raise their hands and I will invite them to ask the questions. So while um, everyone is thinking about the questions, mm -hmm. uh, I have, um, I have a, I have actually two questions, but I'll begin. My first question is, um, I was going through your work also, and you also talk about this traditional model or moral model of, and you also mentioned over here, the concept of karma. And this, mm -hmm. uh, along with it comes this, uh, you know, the moral model or the traditional model of um, looking at disabilities as if it is something that has, as if some, it is kind of a punishment or something. I was just that how are you addressing this issue in teacher education? Because there is also a discussion which says that pedagogy um, is not just a set of skills that you learn, mm -hmm. but your it's also steeped in culture. True, so how, yeah. did you about it? how did you address it? Over uh, to uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Tayaba. Uh, I think this is a very critical uh, and an important question. Uh, you know, uh, the Buddhist belief in karma actually, you know, uh, uh, can be looked in two different ways. Uh, you know, uh, uh, on one side, uh, uh, one extreme of this belief in karma, you know, uh, uh, most often when a person is born with some form of disabilities, uh, you know. Uh, people tend to get, uh, you know, uh, a belief that this is a result of some, you know, uh, uh, non-virtuous deeds uh, of your past. Meaning, you know, uh, you have wronged something in the past and this is the punishment uh, or the penalty that you pay for what you have wronged in the past to be born as uh, a person with some form of disability. But now, uh, especially for those people you know, for teachers, uh, you know, uh, students, uh, community members, uh, for those people who uh, uh, are born without any form of disabilities, we also believe that, you know, uh, I think this, this belief is not just, uh, you know, uh, limited or restricted to Buddhism. In all religion, you know, uh, if you are someone who is kind to others, who has someone who is compassionate in your dealing with others, someone who is uh, considerate of uh, the shortcomings or the weaknesses of the other person. If you do something good to others, you know, uh, good things happens to you. You also accumulate uh, some virtuous, uh, you know, uh, deeds, isn't it? Some uh, positive merits. And that belief actually, uh, we are trying to, you know, capitalize on this the positive values that we see in this karma to, to make people, you know, believe that there is still many good or virtuous actions that you can still take by, you know, being considerate of those children who brings, you know, who are born with disabilities, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say for teachers who are teaching in the school. If they're more considerate, if they're more uh, more committed, uh, if they're more dedicated, dedicated to make special efforts to address the needs of those children who need their services much more than those children who do not uh, have any special needs, 
I think, uh, you know, because there is a greater efforts needs uh, uh, required, there is a greater amount of sacrifices ne needed. I think the amount of positive, you know, uh, merits that you accumulate uh, will be more. Uh, thereby, you know, uh, paving a better, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, life for your own future, uh, actually. So this is the kind of, you know, uh, understanding that we try to uh, provide to our students through the pedagogy. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, advocacy in the communities, it is a, it is a challenge. Uh, we have, you know, sometimes uh, the challenge is not uh, in convincing other community members, but the challenge uh, is, uh, you know, uh, in convincing those parents of children who have, uh, you know, uh, special needs or disabilities. Because uh, uh, parents uh, uh, are, those parents who have children with special needs are very protective uh, of their children. You know, uh, convincing a parent uh, uh, of a child who has special needs to send their children to school in itself is a huge task. Uh, because they feel that the schools uh, are not, you know, uh, 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 prepared enough to address the needs of their children. But over time, you know, uh, with the kind of development uh, that we have seen in our school system, be it in terms of, you know, uh, basic infrastructures, having a ramp uh, developed and built uh, for wheelchair users, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, providing, making provisions uh, uh, for, you know, uh, children with visual impairment so that there are no, you know, physical, you know, uh, spaces that poses a risk for children with visual impairment. So making such basic improvements and development within the school community, at the same time making the you know, uh, school itself as a more welcoming environment by addressing the attitudes of teachers and the other school staff in the school itself has uh, helped us you know, uh, uh, change the perception of the uh, parents as well as community members uh, to uh, you know uh, encourage uh, inclusion efforts in the country thank you so much we have two more questions i think if there's a third one but we we'll pose to so can i invite first of all dr shazia ivan to ask her question uh, shazia over to you and then uh, uh, manail and after that then ji thank you dr taiba um, and thank you dr torji um, I, I was. I think I have mentioned in my uh, question as well this uh, idea of, and I'm going to steal it and use it and borrow it if you allow me to the gross uh, national happiness index because we think in terms of commodification so much mm -hmm. um, that the education is it's driven to employ people rather than develop the individual and, and the human with those uh, you know, attributes that you've been referring to. Um, my work does kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, share its values with inclusion, diversity and access. Um, but I, I haven't worked with, um, you know, kind of the, the physical abilities and challenges. So my, my question is very simple. It's like, how does the Bhutanese education policy define inclusion in a more broader way? Um, mm -hmm. Is it focused on any other elements and demographics other than students with special needs? Um, because, for example, in the context of uh, Pakistan, I see there are these socioeconomic issues, access to even education, um, and then uh, linguistic proficiency, that's a huge thing. Um, and then, you know, our population is huge as compared to yeah. what you have in Bhutan. <laughs> so please, just, just kind of, um, if you could share a little bit of your insight on what other elements are uh, included mm. in happiness. Uh, oh, sorry, inclusion, Garden, the, the happiness is on my mind. Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh, I think that's a very important question, uh, you know. Uh, uh, when we talk about inclusion in Bhutan, you know, uh, uh, we do, uh, you know, uh, borrow the, you know, uh, UNESCO's uh, definition of inclusive education. That is much more comprehensive, very broad based, broad based uh, that, you know, addresses, uh, you know, uh, the needs of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
children not just uh, with special needs or disabilities but the wider definition of inclusion in terms of you know uh, the socioeconomic status the gender the you know uh, 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 all other sorts of you know differences or the diversity that the children brings to the school uh, however uh, you know uh, in bhutan at the moment uh, you know uh, the other differences uh, regional differences you know socioeconomic differences uh, uh, differences in terms of gender uh, so this measure of the other differences besides disabilities have not been an issue uh, and a concern for us uh, mm -hmm. especially in education uh, when we talk about inclusion uh, until the you know uh, 2000 you know uh, we have been you know uh, concerned about access to education now we have addressed the you know the universal access to education uh, goal that we had set for our education mm -hmm. uh, now we we have uh, realized and we have understood and we have uh, you know uh, uh, received the confidence uh, to really think of addressing the needs of children with special needs but other parameters or the you know uh, uh, differences uh, that inclusion actually you know uh, uh, you know uh, entails uh, has not been an issue uh, for us at the moment our issue has been children with disabilities and children with special needs because they were the marginalized group uh, of children when we talked about inclu uh, uh, talk about inclusion in the country mm -hmm. so this is the kind of and here in bhutan at least at the moment while we are conscious of the other differences that inclusion needs to address, our focus and our efforts at the moment is more uh, inclined towards addressing the needs of uh, uh, children with disabilities uh, in the country. Okay, thank you very much. I hope I answered your question. Uh, oh yes, perfectly. Yes, I, I, I think, and it, it also points towards how we can contextualize um, um inclusive education so you were yes. talking about your context but then if we were yeah thank you very yes. much thank you thanks a lot for that question Shazia. Yeah. Uh, dr Rajiv, there is another question by menahil mm -hmm. and Manahil, if you could ask the question this is related to public and private education in bhutan uh okay. can I, would you like to go ahead um, yes, sure. Uh, thank you so much for a very great, interesting, uh, insightful talk. My question was, does there exist a public and private divide in the education sector of Bhutan? And if yes, how do you deal with the problem of funding? And when you say teaching all, uh, training all teachers and ensuring all schools are inclusive, how do you deal with that issue if the divide exists? And a uh, second question was also somewhat related to the economy of the country, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. that if you focus on this development philosophy of cross-national happiness, does it have any implications on the economy of the country if the focus is not on the GDP? All right, uh, thanks a lot. I think uh, both your questions are very important. Uh, regarding the, you know, uh, is there any divide between the public education and private education? Uh, this is this has not uh, uh, been an issue in our country. Uh, mostly, our uh, education is uh, public, uh, public funded. We have a handful of you know a uh, handful of private schools, uh, very countable, very few. Of the uh, total of around six thousand uh, uh, six hundred six hundred plus schools uh, uh, in the country, probably we might have around you know. Uh, uh, 20 private schools and this these private schools are you know started by uh, uh, you know you know uh, private you know uh, entrepreneurs uh, who felt the need to uh, you know you know uh, complement uh, the government's efforts uh, towards educating the younger generation of uh, uh, children and uh, you know uh, in terms of you know school curriculum they use the same uh, curriculum. They sit for the school, you know, same examinations, uh, uh, same board examinations uh, that we have at certain levels of uh, schooling. In terms of teachers, uh, uh, you know, uh, the you know teachers who get trained in the two colleges of education, uh, if they if 
if the government schools are not able to absorb them into the public schools for, for employment, this school, uh, these teacher graduates can always join the uh, private schools for uh, their career. And at the same time, you know, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, school textbooks, uh, the government still provides uh, school textbooks for, for the private schools. And, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to private schools, uh, not many actually, you know, uh, there are uh, high-end uh, private schools in the country. There are a few schools uh, that attract, you know, uh, top from performing uh, students. But at the same time, the school fees for such uh, schools are also, uh, you know, uh, much higher than the government schools. And it is only those parents who can afford to send their... It is purely the parents' choice. Otherwise, you know, the majority of our, you know, uh, students who go, would go to public schools. And uh, in terms of the general quality of education, you know, still today, our parents' choice would be the public schools. Okay. But in terms of the monitoring, in terms of monitoring the quality of teaching, learning and assessment uh, in the private schools, in terms of uh, monitoring the teacher competences in the private schools, it is still the Ministry of Education as a government uh, agency that will look after such uh, aspects in the private uh, schools or private education. The other, uh, the second question that you asked, uh, you know, uh, gross, national uh, gross national happiness as a development philosophy is very much uh, humanistic. Uh, it is very much humane in its approach uh, to development. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, but we dis still do consider, you know, uh, economic growth as important. However, when we say, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, economic growth is important, we are also very mindful in not, rec uh, uh, you know, uh, mindlessly exploiting our natural resources in the country. For instance, uh, one of the pillars of GNH is, you know, uh, conservation of environment. Uh, Bhutan today has uh, uh, around, you know, 72% uh, of our uh, country is uh, forested. And our, our goal is to be able to maintain a minimum of 62% of our country, you know, forested, unexplored. Uh, if you want to extract the timber and the forest resources, we can do it. But at the same time, we are also mindful of the future implications that such a development approach can have. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, uh, mineral deposits, but uh, today if we explore our mineral deposits and, you know, uh, uh, you know exploit, the, uh, exploit the mineral deposits uh, to make money, the kind of returns that we would get is not going to be sustainable. You know, uh, and given that, we are also very mindful in not really exploiting the, uh, you know, the natural resources that we have in the country. So, and uh, we are a small nation, a very small country. Our culture has always been our strength. You know, uh, we do not believe in developing our military power to defend ourselves. Our own cultural identity has been our strength uh, today if we are known to the outside world and if we want to if we want to if Bhutan wishes to defend our own sovereignty it is not through the military might it is through our own cultural values our own cultural heritage our own you know uh, uh, lifestyles as a Bhutanese so this is uh, you know uh, but at the same time in a you know uh, in a 21st century world uh, you know uh, uh, economy is the country's economy is important but at the same time you know uh, we are always mindful to make not to not to make a mad uh, you know uh, Russia uh, in you know uh, pursuing our economic uh, growth and development Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I answered your question uh, uh, yeah. thank you so much thank you Dr. So there are three questions now which are related to teacher education. I'll ask my yeah. very short question and then I'll uh, invite Farzana and An Anusha to ask theirs. So my right. question is that these teachers in the private schools, 
um, do they require to have some sort of teaching before they are um, before they enter a, this teaching career in private schools? This is one question. And then Farzana, uh, please go ahead and ask your question, and Anusha, please ask your question also. Both, both of them relate to teacher education. Over okay, to you. Farzana. Yeah, so I wanted to know how effective have the education programs been in meeting the need of uh, inclusive education and also what were the main components of the programs that that actually made them fruitful in meeting those needs? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Anusha, if you could ask a question also. Anusha? an insightful um, seminar um, learned a lot so you talked about evaluation of teachers and using a tool uh, to do so can you please discuss this in more detail okay all right uh, thanks a lot uh, the first one uh, Tayaba's uh, question you know uh, are the private school teachers required to have some you know uh, teacher qualification yes and I'm going to give you a very honest uh, answer okay in policy in paper in principle, yes, the Ministry of Education also has, a, a, you know, a, a policy that requires all private schools in the country to recruit only teachers with teacher qualification. But, uh, uh, but the sad thing is, not all teachers in the private schools have a professional teacher qualification, and. Uh, this is one of the challenges, uh, you know, as someone who works uh, uh, in a college of education, uh, this is something that I have been fighting with the Ministry of Education and the Royal Government of Bhutan to, you know, enforce this requirement stringently and seriously. But we are still, this is still, uh, you know, uh, uh, an uphill battle that we are, you know, uh, uh, fighting with the Ministry of Education and the private schools. The, uh, the other question, uh, you know, uh, how successful uh, has uh, inclusive education uh, uh, programs been in the country? Uh, I think uh, on the whole, uh, given the late start uh, to, you know, uh, uh, adopt uh, uh, inclusive education as an educational approach in the country, our, you know, uh, the real efforts to address the needs of children with special needs in the mainstream education setting began in the early 2000 only, uh, 2000, 2001. Uh, more particularly with the introduction of the, you know, uh, uh, child friendly school concept, uh, which is very much rights based. Uh, has it been successful? I would like to believe that uh, our efforts uh, uh, to you know make inclusive education in the school has been you know uh, uh, successful and how did we do it uh, we, we started off uh, firstly by you know uh, creating awareness uh, and educating our teachers in the schools uh, uh, to embrace uh, you know uh, differences to embrace diversity to you know uh, uh, acknowledge the the unique uniqueness that each learner brings into the classroom into the schools and you know uh, uh, even today we have you know uh, teachers who finds uh, you know uh, you know teaching children with special needs in the mainstream classroom setting quite a challenge you know uh, but at the same time there are many teachers now who also respect uh, uh, the principles and philosophies of inclusion and uh, some of the you know uh, uh, initial you know beginnings that we you know made in terms of orienting our uh, school teachers who did not have any ideas of inclusive education to respect uh, inclusive education approach uh, in the system where you know uh, organizing you know uh, trainings and workshops on how to handle children with the primary forms of disabilities like you know children with if how how does a teacher handle a child with you know a, you know a moderate to mild to moderate learning disabilities or how do we adapt our teaching practices to a child who has 
some form of hearing difficulty or some form of visual impairment. So we started off with that one and then we are still, you know, uh, uh, continuing that practice. But at the same time, wherever, you know, there is a need to provide a more advanced level of, you know, uh, uh, training to our teachers to address the needs of children with extreme forms of disabilities, that is also done, you know, uh, simultaneously. At the same time, we uh, started off with a very massive, you know, uh, uh, parental, uh, uh, you know, awareness and education programs uh, on inclusive education. We trained uh, uh, the school principals throughout the country, the district education officers, the curriculum developers uh, on the need to make our, inc uh, make our education system much more inclusive. We started off by introducing the, you know, uh, uh, the uh, child rights, uh, uh, you know, uh, the convention on the rights of the child, highlighting education as a fundamental right. Then we introduced uh, the UNCRPD, United, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. At the same time, talking about some of the important international, you know, uh, instruments like the Salamanca De Declaration, you know, the Jomtin Declaration on Education for All, and then connecting that those uh, in international, you know, uh, 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 instruments to our own national policy documents. So this is how we did. Uh, and this exercise is still being continued. When it comes to evaluating the competences of the teachers in the field, our teachers are assessed on the basis of eight different standards. I'll just name a few of them, you know, in the context of inclusive education. Uh, our school teachers are expected to prepare lesson plans on a daily basis. And especially for those, uh, uh, you know, teachers, even if they do not have any children with special needs in their class, you know, one of the requirement is how inclusive are their lessons in terms of addressing the diverse needs of those children in the class, even in the absence of any special needs. So how inclusive are their lessons in terms of, you know, the kind of active learning activities designed. How inclusive are their lessons in terms of the kind of, you know, language used for teaching? How inclusive are their lessons in terms of, you know, uh, the, you know, kind of, you know, group activities organized? How inclusive are their lessons in terms of the kind of assessment that they use, you know, uh, in assessing students' uh, learning in the classroom? If a teacher has planned a lesson where he or she uses, you know, a technology, some form of digital tools for teaching, the teacher will be assessed on the basis of how inclusive is the, is the use of that digital tool for teaching children with differing needs. So such aspects of, you know, uh, assessment. Uh, and at the same time, the teachers will be uh, assessed on all other aspects uh, of uh, uh, the standards of teaching. So. One is, uh, you know, uh, uh, just to name their personal attributes is one. The other one is, you know, how inclusive, how knowledgeable, how, uh, you know, informed are they in terms of the use of pedagogy. They will be assessed in terms of the standards of assessment that they, as kind of assessment practices that they use uh, for, you know, assessing the students' uh, uh, learning. Our teachers are also assessed in terms of the leadership roles that they take in the school. They are also assessed in terms of the, their knowledge and competences in the use of technology, ICT, uh, in teaching, learning, and assessment. So these are the, you know, uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, uh, they, are, they are also assessed in terms of their research output or the research knowledge and competences. And research is, uh, a new culture here in our, uh, our education system, but it is also a practice and a culture that has, uh, you know, uh, been growing over the last few years or over the last uh, decade or so. So these are some of the ways of how a teacher standard or teacher competences would be measured and assessed, you know, uh, annually 
in our education system. I hope I have, uh, you know, uh, responded to your question. In case if I, have, I haven't, you can still, you know, uh, let me know. Hey, this is excellent. Thank you, Dr. Rajji. There's just quick two, uh, quick last two, two uh, quick questions. I was just wondering, what are the ramifications for the teacher if the teacher does not come up to that, those standards or does not um, do very well in the evaluation? This is question number one. And question number two is um, languages in education. What mm -hmm. language is for instruction? And last question, um, you, very interestingly, this was a question in the chat and I'm sorry, I don't remember who asked it. And this was about when did this movement to indigenize curriculum start? What triggered it? I'm so sorry, I'm taking like five minutes more. I think this is good. To, uh, all right, the first one, you know, uh, what kind of ramifications are provided for those teachers who actually struggle struggles to you know uh, make up to the standard required? So in Bhutan, uh, uh, these teacher standards uh, uh, we have just started uh, you know uh, using this uh, uh, Bhutan you know professional standards for teachers you know uh, in the schools. Uh, just now this is a pilot phase. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we are in the pilot phase for the next three years. We are going to pilot and see how this one works. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, our teachers. Uh, there are four different levels of teachers in the uh, in the uh, in the system. There are beginning teachers, then uh, you know, uh, uh, beginning teachers. Uh, the next one I think is uh, 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 a comp. I'm missing beginning teachers. Uh, uh, the highest one is distinguished teachers. And for those teachers uh, who are struggling to, you know, uh, be able to achieve that standard, the, the school, you know, uh, will come up with, you know, interventions to help them over time, over time. The school, especially the school leadership, the school principals, and every school has a lead teacher or a master teacher okay lead teacher or master teacher and uh, those teachers who are in the distinguished level of the uh, category of the teachers some of them will also be involved as mentor teachers and especially for those teachers who are struggling to be able to you know fulfill that required standards of teaching they will be mentored and the school will design interventions to help them. And uh, besides the, the intervention that the school designs to help such struggling teachers, the district education officers will also closely monitor such teachers so that, you know, uh, they, they have that required, you know, support mechanisms put in place to, you know, uh, uh, improve themselves. Despite all the attempts uh, to, you know, uh, made to help such t struggling teachers improve and realign themselves, uh, uh, if they fail, then gradually such teachers will be asked to exit from the system. But right. they will be given a time frame to actually make the necessary changes. So uh, uh, the second one is. Uh, Sorry, I forgot your second second question. Education. Do what medium of instruction do you use? Oh, sorry, education? the medium of instruction in uh, in our country is uh, the primary medium of instruction is English. And uh, but our national language, we have our own national language, uh, which is uh, uh, you know spoken as well as a written language, but in terms of you know uh, you know. Uh, the difference in the languages, uh, you know, we would have, uh, you know, uh, our, you know, we have around 23 spoken languages, you know, without any written script. The only language that has a written script is uh, Tsongkha, that is our la uh, national language. And, uh, you know, uh, the primary medium of instruction in the school, in the school is English. So English is used as a primary medium of you know, instruction in all subjects, English, you know, uh, uh, 
history, geography, sciences, maths, all done in you know English, except for a uh, few subjects that are taught in Zonka, our own national language. So, uh, you know, uh, English is a primary medium of instruction, you know, uh, being used across the entire school education system has always proven, you know, uh, advantages for us, uh, especially uh, when our university graduates, you know, have to go outside Bhutan for higher studies. Uh, because if you stick by our national language, Bhutan is the only, lang uh, only country that uses our language. So it's going to, it would have proven quite difficult for us and we would have remained isolated from the rest of the world. The third question that you had was, uh, indigenization of the curriculum okay uh, the reason why okay this is a very good question actually you know uh, until the early 80s you know uh, we were so dependent on you know uh, uh, because uh, when initially when the western model of education started uh, we had borrowed the indian the british indian system of education in the country even today if you look at the general structure of education in bhutan it's very much English, you know, British oriented. And uh, the, the need for Bhutanization of our own curriculum, you know, and even the Bhutanization of the teaching, you know, uh, teachers in the school system was felt uh, in the early 80s. Uh, just to give you an example, you know, when I went to school as a young boy, most of my teachers were all from India except for my Zonka teacher, my own national language teacher. Most of my teachers were, you know, uh, teachers from India. Because initially when we adopted or uh, started a Western model of education, you know, most of our, our own people were, you know, uh, educated in the monasteries. They did not speak English. So we had to depend uh, on India. However, you know, uh, uh, with the passage of time, uh, when I went to school, I studied Indian history. See, uh, I studied Indian geography. And uh, our government realized that uh, this is not, uh, you know, uh, because I as a young child can easily, you know, uh, uh, see how disconnected I felt uh, in studying and reading Indian history or Indian geography. And uh, in the early 80s, our government realized the need to make our education much more wholesome and meaningful, where our children were able to connect to connect what they learned in the classroom to the actual life outside the school or the outside the classroom. And that's where we felt an urgent need to, you know, botanize the whole education system. And today, you know, our, our, the majority of the teachers, probably we might have around, you know, uh, five percent, uh, uh, you know, of expatriates uh, from outside Bhutan. Otherwise, uh, ninety to ninety-five percent of our uh, teachers in schools are all Bhutanese. Uh, uh, Bhutanese. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Doctor uh, Rinchen Dorji, for this very insightful, comprehensive presentation, and uh, for answering our questions. And we will uh, get back to you, hopefully, for some more, uh, some collaborative work. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. And thank you for asking all those questions. Thank you very much. Have a Thanks very so much. Thank it you was, so much. It, uh, it was, you know, an uh, honor and a privilege for me to be able to interact uh, with you. Uh, you know, uh, this thank is you. always, uh, for us, it is always a new learning experience. Thanks a lot. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And thanks to you, uh, Tayaba. My special thanks to you for, you know, creating this opportunity for me to be able to, you know, interact with your uh, colleagues and students. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Temur. Thank you, Hamna. And thank you, Arsene.